test can be used in this area. Recently, organic matter application can improve soil structure and increase the quality of soil organic colloid. Organic matter can increase cation exchangeable capacity. That way, we can increase water holding capacity that can hold the flow of gravitational water. When we apply nitrogen fertilizer, it will be able to reduce nitrate leaching. In the end, productivity will increase. Generally, coastal land on the south beach of Yogyakarta is dominated by sandy soil fractions. In a dry climate, soil organic matter was decomposed rapidly. It may cause coastal land to have enough organic content and humus to create soil aggregate. Many sources of organic matter have been used to increase the water holding capacity of sandy land. Tank of organic matter, manure, compost, and other materials came from plant residue that will be applied in pre-planting, completely mixed with soil. Fertilizing was done by giving liquid fertilizer, especially nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium two times a day. Watering practices use shallow groundwater to create fresh water. Providing fresh water from shallow water is by using chain wells. The fresh water can be kept due to the rainfall, so it depends on the intensity of rainfall. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the first lecture with expert this day, I'm delighted to invite Dr. Lis Nur Aini from Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, Indonesia. So Dr. Lis Nur Aini is an expertise in land evaluation and spatial planning region landscape. So, let's So let's ask greet uh, Dr. Neni. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, you you can clearly hear my voice, right? Yes. Yes, right. Okay, how are you, Dr. I'm fine and I'm so glad to meet you all. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Waalaikumsalam. I'm so glad to meet you. So for information, Dr. Neni is one of my lecturer when I was in college and I and currently she has a position as a, a head of agro uh, agrotechnology study program. So Dr. Neni, uh, are you ready to giving the material? Yes. Okay, so uh, doctor, you have uh, 20 minutes for your material presentation, and then we okay. continue with Q&A session with 10 minutes. All right, you may share your screen, please. Okay. Okay, you can see our screen. Yes, it's already available on the screen. Okay. Can you uh, please the, do the slideshow? Okay. 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 Okay, that's quite good. Okay, uh, Dr. Neni, the, t the screen and the time is yours now. Please, doctor. Okay, thank you, Hilmi, for the time. Hello, everyone. How are you? Mm, firstly, I will introduce myself. Uh, like Hilmi said, I am Nisnur Aini. I am from Department of Agrotechnology, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. And now, the FSS committee uh, give me task to convey one of the model of plant cultivation in Yogyakarta, especially in uh, coastal area. <clears throat> Uh, like the videos, uh, if cultivation in coastal area is one of uh, local wisdom in Yogyakarta by utilizing uh, marginal land with 
various limitation for cultivation. Okay, I will start with the global position of Indonesia. You can see the map. Uh, this map present Indonesia's position in the global map. You can see this. Uh, this is Indonesia, and Indonesia is archipelagic uh, country, and it makes Indonesia have a very long beach. Uh, if you know, if land and sea area in Indonesia is a uh, eight and half million kilometers square, and so a big country with beach length uh, until 95 kilometers and we have population around 270 million people. Yes, uh, we have a big country. <clears throat> and most of Indonesia population live in coastal area. Uh, the other hand, uh, Indonesia is a country that is include the world ring of fire. Uh, you know, if we uh, in a ring of fire area, we always uh, near with volcano, uh, volcanoes. Yeah. Indonesia have uh, 129 volcanoes and some of these volcanoes erupt frequently. Uh, this condition make Indonesia have uh, many landscape formation ranging for, from uh, mountains until beach with various land condition. Uh, there is map of Indonesia and Yogyakarta is one of province in Indonesia and it's located in the middle of island of Java in South part, uh, apa, southern part of Java. Uh, there is a map of Indonesia and uh, it is map of uh, central of Java in the middle of Java Island. And this is a map of uh, regional province, uh, special regional province, uh, Yogyakarta province. You can see in the map if on the, uh, on the north side, uh, there is Mount Merapi. You can see this is Mount Merapi. Uh, Mount Merapi is one of the most active volcanoes in the world with a uh, period, uh, eruption period, uh, very short to until five years. Merapi always eruption. Uh, on the east side, there is scarce areas uh, that stretches to the south. Uh, this scarce area, there is one of the most beautiful areas in the world, namely the Nglanggeran Ancient Mountain Area. Uh, and uh, in scarce area with uh, have a special pattern in the formation of landscape and land use. Uh, on the west, uh, we have Menare Mountain. Uh, this is a part of Kars Mountain, like in the uh, east. And the last, on the short side of the Yogyakarta, we have a coast with long coast line until 130 kilometers. However, not all beaches in Yogyakarta have the same material. We have two type uh, coastal material. First, uh, the first is the volcanic material in this area. And the second is the limestone material in the east and uh, west. The variety of the land condition in special region of Yogyakarta province is the main attraction, both as a plain cultivation area, conservation area, and as a tourism area. You can see the map. Uh, Yogyakarta have uh, active volcano uh, and Mount Merapi 
Uh, Mount Merapi have a specific ecosystem in an active volcano area and the material about Mount Merapi will be derived by Dr. Eko Hanudin after that and at the southern part there is a coastal area and the southern area of Yogyakarta we have uh, two, dis uh, two distinctive ecosystem uh, namely surjan land we we will get material about land use of surjan uh, we, uh, by Dr. Ma'ruf Nuruddin and uh, on next session and coastal coastal land and so in this session i will focus on land man management at coastal area yes you can see the map uh, map again yes uh, yogyakarta position is between the mountain in the north and the sea in the south uh, yogyakarta is a disaster prone city like uh, you can see in the uh, videos uh, that always face the threat of Mount Merapi eruption. Uh, you know, if uh, I said if Mount Merapi have short uh, period for eruption, and the second disaster threat is at quite uh, the shifting <clears throat> the earth plate in certain seas uh, of Yogyakarta and. UMY is located between two. You know, uh, UMY may be uh, one of disaster campus. <laughs> Mount Merapi and South Beach create the specific agroecosystem which can be appropriately adopt by a local farmer. We have many uh, agroecosystem and the the uh, the each, uh, each of agroecosystem have a local uh, local farmer to to uh, do the the land. <clears throat> the South Beach area was sandy coastal land with the problem of water retention and low fertility. Another problem in this area is salty wind, which can be damaged the main commodities crop, thus requiring windbreaker plan. This photo depicts the original condition of coastal landscape of the southern coast of Yogyakarta uh, before it was managed. Uh, we know that coastal area have unique condition. Uh, such as high temperatures, relative strong wind gusts, low humidity, and soil that are dominated by the sand fraction. In this session, we will focus on the technology for managing coastal sandy soil to improve its fertility level so that productivity can be increased. <clears throat> the main problem of coastal land with sandy soil first is structureless uh, which is indicated by the loose soil the second low nutrient retention uh, where the ability of the soil to exchange nutrient ions is low the organic matter content is low too the third low water holding capacity uh, that so the ability of the soil to bind or hold water is low. Fourth, low nutrient content. You know that nutrient are need to plant growth. Uh, fifth, uh, salty wind from the sea. This condition will cause the plants to be exposed the, uh, to salt water vapor carried by the sea breeze to the land so that the plant leaf are exposed to physiological disturbance or plasmolysis and the last during the day the ground temperature is too hot the solution to this condition is uh, we can use Merlin technology Merling technology is technology by mixing sandy soil with clay soil 
we uh, manure and fertilizer and advantage this te te uh, technology is uh, nutrient retention and water holding capacity will be increased and soil aggregation is formed. Okay, uh, we can see the picture, yeah, uh, typical of sandy soil at coastal area. Uh, soil that has sandy texture has uh, an impact on the poor physical, chemical, and biological properties of the soil. Uh, sandy soil at the coastal area dominated by sand and low content of clay mineral. If the uh, soil have uh, low content, uh, low clay material and dominated by sand, uh, the effect low capacity and providing water for uh, for plant uh, plant growth. Uh, the second hand, uh, on second hand, the sandy soil uh, have a low content of organic material, and the effect uh, will be low soil fertility. Uh, so uh, it make uh, efficiencies on application of nitrogen is low. Uh, if the soil have uh, uh, dominated by sand and low content of material and low content of mer uh, organic matter, it will be make soil texture have no clot. If uh, the soil have no structure, will be make a high porosity and water flow as gravitational water. Uh, and the effect, uh, it will be make and fertilizer will easily run out from root zone. Uh, the effect, uh, finally, uh, productivity in land, uh, especially sandy soil, will be low. How to increase productivity in coastal land? Uh, this soil problem can be overcome by using the concept of Merling technology. You know, uh, Merling technology. Uh, this technology, uh, this, te uh, this is a technique to improve the physical and chemical properties of soil by mixing two uh, soil types. Uh, that have a contrasting texture because in this land dominate uh, by sand it is necessary to add clay fraction uh, this material can be taken from river sediment uh, mode for or clay that is around this area uh, in addition clay for for improving soil fertility it also requires uh, organic matter. We can take on from animal manure on by farmers in the area. Animal manure on food waste, on plant waste uh, can be composed to get a better quality for uh, organic fertilizer. Uh, the addition of clay and organic matter is key to reclamation of coastal sandy soil before the addition of other fertilizer such as nitrogen, phosphorus, or and potassium. You can see uh, organic matter and clay application uh, will be improved soil structure and increase quality of soil organic colloid. Uh, and then uh, it may increase water holding capacity and will be reduction to nitrate leaching. Uh, finally, will uh, it will be increases the productivity of coastal area. 
Okay, in the following picture, you can see the main thing uh, that can be done to improve the condition of the land in the coastal area is to make the soil in the area able to form aggregates. The formation of soil aggregates can be assisted by uh, organic matter, where organic matter will bind uh, soil particles. When the soil aggregates are formed, the soil structure will be also the uh, uh, will also be formed. Uh, after the soil aggregates are formed, the retention of nutrient and water increase so that the soil is able to inhibit nutrient leaching and the rate of water infiltration. Thus. Uh, the availability of nutrient and water for plants also increase. You can see how the uh, organic matter can can make uh, soil uh, soil particle uh, form it a soil aggregate. Next, uh, no less important uh, important is a uh, watering uh, you know if in a uh, sandy soil coastal area uh, the temperature is very high so watering is carried out as is the case with ordinary land you uh, using fresh water yeah uh, we use fresh water in the uh, coastal area how to get the fresh water at the beach? Uh, the thing to do is drilling wells and make water uh, reservoir using a concrete base. You can see the picture how the concrete base uh, we put in a row and uh, this is will uh, make a drainage is easy. Doctor, uh, Doctor Nanny, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt your talk, but uh, okay. we have only twenty uh, two minutes left. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, okay. maybe we can uh, we can continue with discussion. Uh, the conclusion in the material is. Uh, management of coastal sandy land by providing input for, uh, from local material uh, such as manure, river clay deposit, and fertilizer uh, can actually increase the productivity of the land and successfully improve the welfare of, of local farmer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nenny, for the explanation regarding to land use for tropical farming at coastal area. Now, uh, we open the Q&A session for 10 minutes. Uh, if you guys, if all participants have a question, please just raise your hand button. Uh, click your raise hand button on your Zoom meeting. Or you can also deliver your question at chat box session. Okay, uh, for participants, you can see if in uh, upper coastal area we have uh, many commodity, various plan, uh, and it is uh, make uh, economic and the area is increased. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nani. There's a papaya, rice, shallot, watermelon, red chili that can be cultivated in the coastal area with uh, such a nice marling mar technology. So, uh, dear all participants, have you uh, have a question? If you have a question, please just please raise uh, click your raise hand button or you can also deliver your question on chat box session
So uh, maybe I want to just uh, I want to give you a little question, Dr. Nani. Yes. So uh, regarding to the uh, horticulture cultivation in this uh, coastal area, there is a fruit, there is a vegetable. Uh, what what uh, you you will prefer is that uh, you prefer to cultivate it is that um, the fruit trees or the vegetable cultivation which which one do you prefer uh, if in the area uh, in a certain part in Jogja, in the coastal area, there is uh, where is uh, we have a uh, main commodities cultivation. Oh, okay. uh, there is a uh, salad and red chili. We have a special variety of salad from this area we call apa tiron variety and we have uh, and this production of so high and it's make the farmer in the area uh, can be rich with the products oh all right so uh, actually uh, fruit production will uh, will need it if we need it high high intake of nutrients, yes. right? So yes. we we have to uh, give a high in, high uh, high input to the land with organic matter. Yes. So okay, that's uh, pretty clear from uh, Dr. Lisnur Aini, and we have one question here from Mr. Ted Chan from Singapore from group 3 and he has a question about can we give doctor oh okay so is okay. is <laughs> this is a uh, okay he's he's asked for a few point. times a few slides okay. so okay. okay um maybe we have uh, 7 minutes right the committees what time left What do we have? Seven minutes. Okay, for seven minutes, Hilmi, please. Yeah. Help me. Will be uh, can be uh, add information about this uh, the session the uh, about coastal area. Okay, please, please, doctor. Please. Yes, we have fresh water in uh, coastal area. Fresh water. Uh, obtains because of the rock formation so uh, we get fresh water no uh, what is uh, no salt water uh, because the rock formation uh, mm. that makes the boundary between salt water and fresh water so we can watering the the plant with uh, of fresh water and uh, mm. this condition is especially in Jogja. Maybe in uh, the other area we can do it because this condition. All right. So uh, the difficulties to get the fresh water. So we have to make the water reservoir. Yes. Okay. Uh, Maybe uh, Dr. Lisnur Aini, are you have another information regarding to uh, coastal area? Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe uh, if you uh, in in uh, area, uh, the farmer. Uh, the, the farmer uh, put uh, 
menu special uh, especially from chicken menu uh, not the other menu because the uh, in the uh, practice for from the farmer if you use chicken area uh, chicken menu make uh, what is make a uh, uh nutrient release is so okay. so slow okay yeah mm. uh, it is our best uh manner for for the area uh, the coastal area okay what a nice information regarding to the manner okay uh Okay, uh, we have one question from Miss Francisca Aprilia from Indonesia. So uh, she asks a question about many people think that developing agriculture in the coastal land area is not possible if it is based on soil classification and land suitability materials. Is there a special strategy that can improve correctly and develop agriculture in coastal land areas as well? Okay, thank you. Uh, first, if you want to, uh, what is uh, developing, uh, developing agriculture in coastal area? First, you you must uh, make the structures from the soil uh, can be uh, formed the aggregate. You can uh, you can add uh, clay to the format the aggregate or you can use uh, organic matter from manure may maybe or for uh, the other uh, the other material and uh, the second you you must uh, give the area fresh water uh, and uh, it's also so difficult to to get the water and uh, so not in the in all the uh, coastal area can uh, do the cultivation like that okay so the um, the conclusion of those question is actually two main points two important main points first is manure and secondly is water a uh, fresh water so manure or clay manure or clay yes so and fresh water okay so okay there is another following question from mr ted chan from singapore where do you get the clay compost etc from formalin Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chan. If in uh, Jogja, uh, we get clay from the river in the uh, in around the area, and we uh, add in this sand uh, sandy soil. Uh, if uh, compost, uh, the farmer in the uh, around area, uh, they have. Uh, Oh, it is peternakan apa ilmi? Ya, yeah. yes. Peternakan? Makan-makan. Peternakan saya kok lupa. Oh, farming. Peternakan. Oh, farming. Yeah. Peternakan yes. Ya. Yeah. Ah, uh, and so uh, uh, it so uh, make the farmer can uh, can get the material so uh, uh, easily. Okay, so from stock farming, we get yes, the yes. we get the compost, compost and etc. And clay from river in around this area. All right. So, uh, actually, we have one minute left, and maybe I want to read the last question. If uh, maybe if oh, is it enough to end the session? Okay, I will write the last question from Mr. Lee, friend 
from Malaysia. Uh, hi, Dr. Liz. Uh, thank you for your talk. May I ask how frequent must organic matter be applied onto the land? And is it once every planting cycle? And how long before the land become very stable for planting? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. or Miss Lee? Mr. That was oh, Mr. Mr. Lee. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, organic matter be applied uh, uh, f uh, once every plant, uh, planting. Uh, before we planting the plant, we must uh, apply the organic matter and the what is uh, the land? Be, how long before the land become very stable to plant? Uh, in area in coastal area in Yogyakarta, we have uh, long time. I think uh, we start to planting uh, in a coastal area uh, since maybe 1980 and uh, no, may, uh, that's make stable for planting because uh, we must uh, make the aggregate be formed in, the, in this area. All right, so actually the organic matter we put at the beginning of plantation yes always okay. uh, we put the the organic matter before planting okay um so i hope that's uh, pretty answering your question from miss francisca from mr ted and from mr lee so i think that's all uh do you have set? Uh, do you guys satisfied with the answer? Okay, thank you so much. Also, all right, thank you. But uh, unfortunately, we have to end this session because we have a limited time. So, thank you so much, Dr. Neni, for the explanation regarding to the land use for tropical farming and coastal area. So, what I can conclude uh, from the Dr. Neni's explanation previously that the coastal area has a typical problem in the soil aggregate uh, characteristic. Also the low nutrient retention, also low water holding capacity. So it needs a special treatment to improve the productivity of this area for especially farming activity. So there is a solution such as modeling technology, also the application of the organic matter uh, to hold the fresh water of course. Also, the farmers from the coastal area built such a kind of uh, water reservoir named Sumorenteng to provide a fresh water and it can be distributed or transferred to the cropping area. So, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Neni, for your time to join us. See you again, Doctor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, okay. Now let's move to the next lecture with expert session. And before we invite the second lecture, let's watch a little bit intro introduction a video regarding to land use for tropical farming at Mount Merapi. Please, guys. Indonesia is an agrarian country that has a 17,000 islands with 271 0.35 million population. Other than that, Indonesia has one of the most active volcano in the world, called Merapi Mountain, beside the other 130 active volcanoes. This mountain head is 2,911 meters above sea level, located in Daerah Istimewa Yogyakarta, especially cover up for regencies that are Sleman, Klaten, Boyolali, and Magelang. These volcanoes has erupted for seven times and left the volcanic ash material as thick as six meters and also recorded apple to damage up to 275 people around. Based on the history of Merapi Mountain eruptions, 
This volcano has a two eruption patterns. Firstly, which are abusive, leaving a lava dome crowd that repeated every four until six years and produces pyroclastic flow known as hot cloud or wood scambrel. Secondly, an explosive eruption with wreckage and pyroclastic flows to 10 until 15 kilometers from the crater. The moon Merapi eruptions might cause damage to living things, but in the long term, this is a natural process for the improvement of the agroecosystem around the mountain. The pyroclastic material, which is the result of the eruption, not only provides a new substrate, but also fights the degraded soil. Also, from the aspect of soil fertility, pyroclastic deposits become a suitable medium to provide physical support, essential plant nutrients, and available plant water. Pedologically, Merapi eruptions will occur in a juvenilization process, so that the soil will become more rich in micro, macro, and beneficial nutrients. The moon Merapi can be made into several landscape units, namely upper slope, middle slope, lower slope, and foot slope. The upper slope covered with the risen volcanic materials. The upper slope contains the anisole soil, then the lower and foot slope contain the subdisole soil. In the latest research, the upper slope has a higher plant nutritional potency. There is a type of plant domination in this type of landform. Is the secondary forest on the upper slope agroforestry on the middle slope, and multiple crop on the lower and foot slope. So that is the video uh, regarding to Merapi Mountain. So we hope that you can feel through the Merapi Mountain itself. So well, ladies and gentlemen, for the next lecture, lecture with expert, I'm delighted to invite Dr. Eko Hanudin from Gajah Mada University, Indonesia, who has expertise especially in soil chemistry and fertility. Okay, let's greet Dr. Eko. Okay, good afternoon, doctor. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Okay, glad to see you again. How are you feeling, doctor? Alhamdulillah. Everything okay. okay. You look spectacular. Okay, so for information, Dr. Eko is one of our mentors in ITFSS year to year. So it's great to have you again in today's session, doctor. So uh, you look uh, ready for giving the material, doctor. <laughs> okay. Uh, doctor Eko, you will have uh, 20 minutes for explanation for your material and afterwards we will have the Q&A session for 10 minutes. So, are you ready for giving the material, doctor? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so this slide is already available on the screen. Dr. Eko, please add the screen and the time is now yours. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat siang. Good yeah, evening, everybody. Uh, in this session, I would like to talk about land use for tropical farming at uh, Mount Merapi. Yeah, I think uh, the previous speaker already uh, talked about uh, volcanoes yeah, in Indonesia. You can see, uh, based on this figure, you can see that uh, Indonesia archipelago almost uh, predominated by uh, volcanic yeah, from the Aceh area until the Papua. So, uh, Indonesia is a big country with uh, 17,000 islands and population uh, until now around 271.3 million. This is data in uh, 2021. There are at least 130 active volcanoes and Rabi is the most active volcano in the world. So, uh, so many uh, geologists, uh, soil scientists, also agronomists, uh, pay special attention to the 
uh, Mount of Merapi. Yeah. And the position of uh, Mount Merapi, a uh, cover on four districts, uh, namely Sleman, Klaten, Wilayah, and Magelang. So uh, if Mount of Merapi uh, Airbus might be uh, the impact, yeah, uh, which affected around four uh, districts in this area. Uh, so uh, the government uh, give a special attention for the activity of this uh, Mount of Merapi. Uh, uh, based on the name, uh, I think you know that uh, Merapi or Api is uh, Indonesian word, uh, means the fire. Yeah. So Mount Merapi is mean a mountain of fire. Uh, this mountain is located around uh, 32 kilometer north of uh, Yogyakarta, yeah, not so far. Yeah. And the height of uh, Mount Merapi is around 2,911 meters above sea level and has a very varied topography from very steep to flat, as well as with a varied uh, agro ecosystem. Yeah, this is because of the uh, various uh, topography. One of the biggest eruptions occurred in uh, 2006, which caused the Yogyakarta area to be covered by volcanic ash material as thick as around six uh, meters. So you can imagine that uh, all of the city covered by the volcanic ash. And the other big eruption also occurred in uh, 17, uh, 86, uh, 19, 22, uh, 18, 72, uh, 19, uh, 30, uh, 19, uh, 76, and also the eruption uh, uh, big uh, enough in November 22, in uh, 1994, Release of a uh, pyroclastic flow uh, kill around uh, 64 people. And uh, also, the last uh, biggest eruption occurred in uh, 2010, which included uh, pyroclastic flows kill uh, almost 275 people, uh, injured a dozen more, and forced tens of thousands to evacuate the area. Uh, based on the eruption pattern, you can see that uh, Mount Merapi has two uh, eruption patterns. Uh, firstly, we call as a uh, effusive uh, pattern, followed by lava dome growth, which repeats every four and then six years and produces pyroclastic flow known as a uh, Merapi type. Yeah? News Ardente, this is a technical term in French. I don't know if this is uh, right or not how to pronounce uh, Nuis Ardente means this is hot float, or in the uh, Java language we call as a uh, Buddhist Campbell. Yeah? Buddhist means uh, quote, yeah, uh, because the shape of a uh, hot float is like a uh, ghost, yeah. And the second one is explosive eruption with winds and pyroclastic close reaching uh, 10 until uh, 15 kilometers from the crater. Uh, maybe there is uh, some, uh, how to say, uh, a kind of prophet yeah, which say that blessing in disguise or in Java prophet we uh, say as a disaster brings a blessing. Yeah. So, Manurapi eruption may cause damage to human, animal, plant life, but in the long term, this is a natural process for improvement of agro ecosystem around uh, Merapi. Yeah. Hot uh, clothes will burn everything yeah, uh, uh, surrounding the Murap uh, Murapi, but uh, volcanic material uh, high content uh, nutrients. So the, this is a natural process to uh, reach the process yeah, uh, in the soil. So fresh pure plastic material as a result of eruption not only provide a new substrate for enslaving soil processes and conserving productivity, but also contract, yeah, eroded or degraded soil. Also from soil quality aspect, that uh, pyroclastic deposit is suitable medium for plant growth, providing uh, physical support and essential plant nutrients in plant available water. This is uh, uh, just uh, an example, the less uh, use uh, map uh, in Jakarta area, you see in the Tip, yeah, uh, tip one, uh, you can see the blue area. This is secondary forest agroecosystem and used as a protective forest area. 
And the green area is the plantation in rice field and village, and the yellow uh, and brown areas is represent the rural and urban uh, areas. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, uh, because of the COVID yeah, uh, pandemic, so we can uh, go there. Yeah, I hope next year we can go there because uh, you can see the beautiful area. And from the landscape aspect, yeah, if landscape of Mount Merapi is slice, yeah, crosswise, it can be uh, into several landscape unit or geographical unit, namely uh, upper slope, yeah, middle slope, lower slope, foot slope, and valley slope. Yeah. So uh, based on this uh, landscape unit or geographical unit, uh, you can uh, manage uh, how to cultivate the plant in uh, this area. And uh, we have a new technical term yeah, we call as agrogeology approach. Yeah, agrogeology, uh, a sub discipline of geology, is the scientific study of origin, nature, composition, distribution, and utilization of soil from a geological viewpoint. So, damage to agricultural land affected by volcanic material is actually just temporary. Yeah. So, from the pedology aspect. Uh, with the inclusion of the fresh material from the Murabi eruption, will occur a rejuvenilization process. Yeah, so that the soil will become more rich in macronutrients uh, such as uh, calcium, magnesium, potassium, yeah, sulfur, and micro uh, nutrients such as zinc, iron, uh, copper, mangan, and also some uh, beneficial nutrients such as uh, silicium and uh, sodium. Uh, Agrogeology approach can be taken with how to manage and use natural resources in geology. Yeah? Uh, for example, like a volcanic scoria, pumice, volcanic ash, yeah, and other the understic rocks, and also the constituent mineral uh, such as a pyroxene, feldspar, or blender. This is the name of a primary mineral, yeah? maybe you know, uh, as the source of uh, plant uh, nutrient. So this is the main concept of Agrogeology. We use uh, geology material as the nutrient source yeah, to improve uh, plant growth. Yeah. This is an example the soil profile uh, at the upper slope area. You uh, see, this is the morphogenesis of the soil. Yeah. You see, this is uh, a ferrous layer uh, with uh, color yeah, gray, uh, yellow. Uh, blacks. Uh, this is uh, indicated the periodization of uh, material deposition process, uh, and uh, this area almost uh, dominated, yeah, uh, by the sand uh, particle, and also the big one is block, yeah, uh, rock block. This uh, because of this is. Uh, and the soil soil we call it and is mean a new yeah soil soil uh, it, it, this is new uh, new soil yeah uh, developed from the fresh volcanic materials yeah. and the plants uh, can grow fastly in this area uh, we observe there is uh, acacia yeah acacia mangium acacia dugrin also we see this bamboo and grass yeah uh, so that's why in that uh, area so many uh, uh, farmers, yeah, cultivates uh, cow yeah, and uh, the others. And this is an example of the soil type and uh, its uh, land unit, uh, landscape unit. At the upper slope area, uh, you see there is the recent volcanic materials yeah, from the uh, smallest uh, particle uh, such as uh, sand until the biggest one uh, block. Uh, rock, yeah. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is just a uh, volcanic materials. Yeah, you you didn't see uh, any soil. Yeah. And if you go uh, shift down in the middle slope, uh, you uh, observe this is uh, andesol, yeah, with uh, black color and uh, friable and also uh, uh, bulk density, yeah, very light, yeah, very light and this is the most fertile soil. Yeah, uh, this soil is the most uh, fertile soil. Yeah, uh, compared with the other soil type, 
and we go down to the lower slope area uh, you see this is uh, just an example uh, in uh, in septic soil soils yeah uh, this is uh, also uh, fertile soil uh, and uh, until the food slide uh, we uh, have uh, in septic soil soil as it is named in uh, soil classification according to uh, USDA yeah, United States Department of Agriculture and this is uh, one important point uh, in uh, agrogeology concept. Uh, we use rock as nutrient source for plants. Yeah, if uh, you take uh, just a uh, oh, stone and you crush uh, until the size of dust, you can use yeah uh, the stone as a source of nutrient. So. Uh, in a uh, concept of agriculture, there is a slogan yeah? from rock to food, yeah? uh, from uh, stone yeah? to rice. Yeah? <laughs> this is just uh, an example how the mechanism, yeah? the solution of uh, primary mineral or rock uh, by uh, uh, carbonic acid. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, there is a proton, yeah. Uh, H plus can uh, dissolve uh, rock yeah? and uh, release some cation uh, such as uh, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, zinc, iron, copper, and uh, so on. So you have uh, this uh, macro and micro uh, to uh, feed the plant. This is an result, yeah, uh, of uh, by uh, this is done by the doctor. Nor Aini, yeah. this is a publication. How to calculate the nutrient potency in uh, Merapi areas? Yeah, uh, based on this uh, figure, you can see yeah, from the upper slope area and the foot slope area that uh, iron is uh, the highest, yeah, uh, almond, yeah, content. Uh, in the second one is calcium, and then uh, uh, phosphate and magnesium. So, uh, uh, I really surprised because uh, in a preserve area we observe that uh, the content of uh, phosphate is higher than uh, magnesium. This is uh, there is some uh, thing yeah to uh, to research more yeah so to to find out why the potassium and uh, sorry the phosphate. Uh, content in the upper uh, upper slope area is higher than the magnesium and uh, also we calculate the content of uh, potassium and sodium and zinc uh, you see that the based on the figure that the content of uh, uh, potassium is higher than sodium and the lowest one is uh, zinc yeah. and this is done uh, an example how to manage uh, Soil on the slope land, we must be careful in cultivating crops in the area that are prone to erosion hazards. So we need to choose plant that beside having a production function also have a conservation function. So uh, we can see the root structure of this plant. So uh, this plant uh, can keep uh, soil uh, to retouch the erosion uh, from the up yeah up uh, zone area yeah so this is a uh, one important thing to select uh, which one is uh, better to plant uh, in that uh, area yeah. so we have to consider that plant have uh, conservation and production uh, function and this is uh, just uh, data yeah uh, uh, from the research also this is the uh, done by dr lisno raini that this is uh, just an example how to see yeah, uh, to now the agro ecosystem uh, based on the land unit yeah, type yeah. at the up, uh, upper slope area with slope more than uh, 40 percent so you see we found that the uh, uh, vegetation uh, was dominated by uh, Acacia decurrent, Albacea, Congo grass, yeah, or para grass. This is uh, classified as a secondary forest. And at the middle slope, with uh, slope uh, around 
uh, at range of uh, 15 until 25 yeah the vegetation uh, dominated by albacea and paragrass this is categorized as uh, agroforestry and at the lower slope we uh, at slope yeah around 8 until uh, 15 uh, percent we observe uh, plants such as albacea mahogany genetum pneumon paragrass bamboo this is categories L multiple cropping and also the same at the foot slope we uh, observe the multiple cropping with a little bit uh, different uh, composition of plant yeah uh, beside mahogany also we found uh, coffee coconut rambutan uh, bando uh, bamboo banana and uh, mangosteen this is uh, uh, just a figure uh, algorithm at the middle and upper yeah uh, uh, predominated by the secondary uh, forest as i told you before and also at the middle lower slope areas uh, predominated by multiple cropping uh, system this is a uh, agro ecosystem at the foot slope yeah uh, you can see this is there are, uh, you see there is a banana and also uh, mango and also coconut and also grass uh, this is a uh, some uh, annual plants also, yeah. And also the important thing, uh, ambient material uh, you use uh, to keep, to maintain uh, soil fertility, uh, we need some organic matter. Uh, so the, this organic matter you can use from uh, compost or uh, manure, yeah, uh, from uh, if manure or chicken manure uh, and so on and also you can use the biological fertilizers yeah. and this is a uh, volcanic areas uh, normally dominated by the andesol uh, type yeah andesol is the name uh, from uh, soil taxonomy in andesol this is a uh, name uh, according to the indusian soil classification also from uh, wrb yeah. Uh, and this uh, from uh, Spanish technical term, yeah, andu means uh, black soil is soil, yeah. so the soil is a uh, black, yeah, soil. And you can see this is uh, some, uh, some uh, farmers, yeah, plant uh, so many, many uh, vegetables. Also, beside the some farmers, oh, there is uh, some uh, new idea. Uh, some people in this area develop the volcano tourism. Yeah, so we yeah, call as a uh, lava tour. Yeah, uh, so you can rent this car or tour motorbike. You can uh, climb yeah to the upper slope area by uh, uh, using this car. Uh, but uh, you uh, you cannot uh, drive by yourself. Yeah? You have to uh, rent uh, to the uh, rental car, yeah. So many uh, rental car provide in this uh, area. So this is uh, new business, yeah, and uh, this area. Yeah. So uh, lava tour, yeah. Uh, beside, uh, uh, we have a negative impact also uh, from the tourist uh, aspect. Uh, uh, you can uh, develop, yeah, uh, new income, yeah. Uh, to generate income uh, for the people uh, surrounding uh, volcanic area. Okay, uh, uh, we can go to the conclusions. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 yeah, pandemic, you cannot visit the Mon uh, Monoprapi, which are very beautiful and tending and cool. I hope in the future you will be able to go there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, I think the last but not least, I have uh, some uh, problems. Maybe you can discuss this uh, topic. Yeah, based on the well, uh, bio geophysical condition of Mount Merapi areas. So uh, I can give you some a question. What are the ideas or ways to manage the area to increase the income of the village community? And the second, in your opinion. Is this area better used as a conservation or a production area? Okay, I think thank you, Mr. Chairman. I give you back the time. 
Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Eko, uh, for such an interesting topic. So that is the beauty of Merapi Mountain. Uh, but unfortunately, we can go there to visit. But if you guys someday uh, come to Indonesia, especially Yogyakarta, maybe uh, the mountain, the Merapi Mountain, will be the interesting spot for nature in Yogyakarta. So yeah, after this, uh, we will be open the Q&A session for 10 minutes. So if you have any question, please just click your right hand button on your Zoom meeting. Or you can also deliver your question to the chat box, please. Okay, we have one participants who raised their hand already. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, I think this is Miss Sang Sangita Magar from India. Please, Mrs. Sangita. You might unmute your microphone. Okay. Hello, sir. I think there's a little bit uh, trouble from your uh, sound. Please, just a little bit louder. Hello. OK, Hello. we clear. Huh. Sir, my question is, as an active volcano, how to create sustainable agriculture for long, long term in this area? OK, you get the point, mister? No. Yeah, is it enough? Just one question. That's it, Miss Sangita. Okay, uh, I will uh, okay. respond your question uh, concerning the system of agriculture. Yeah, uh, we have uh, two aspects. Uh, uh, one uh, concerning the natural aspect, and the second one uh, concerning the uh, anthropogenic uh, aspect. Yeah. So uh, we have to manage this area based on the land capability. Uh, maybe you have ever heard about uh, land capability uh, or uh, land evaluation. So we have to make sure that uh, if you choose the plan is uh, suitable uh, with the uh, soil physics, soil uh, chemistry, on biological properties in the soil, uh, and also. Uh, the climate in condition because at the upper uh, slope area uh, has a temperature around uh, 18 uh, degree uh, Celsius, uh, but in the night will be uh, uh, lower. Yeah. So uh, you can uh, develop a, a plant such as like uh, coffee and also maybe the uh, the other yeah plants uh, can grow well in the uh, condition. But in the uh, lower area, uh, you can uh, plant uh, annual plants that is like uh, maize, or you can uh, plant also uh, uh, peanuts uh, and uh, so on. Uh, so uh, from the technical aspect, yeah, you can uh, manage about the. Uh, suitability between plants and uh, soil properties and also uh, you can give uh, some uh, nutrient if uh, you found some uh, any uh, nutrient deficiency but uh, in case of the natural aspect for example like uh, eruption uh, you cannot control uh, uh, you just uh, to uh, minimize the impact of uh, eruption yeah yeah maybe uh, 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 we just <laughs> uh, pray yeah, uh, to God uh, uh, so uh, so that the Arabs, uh, the Merapi yeah, uh, not uh, uh, erupted again. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, just a strategy how to uh, sustain the agriculture in this uh, area. Okay, I think this is uh, my response, Mr. Chairman. Uh, maybe is there any uh, some unclear uh, statement uh, so uh, you can uh, ask more 
Okay, thank you so much for Dr. Eko. Uh, I think that's uh, pretty enough from Ms. Sangita. Is that already answer your question? I think that's really complete answer from Dr. Eko. <laughs> Okay, and maybe from the Miss Sangina uh, questions, may it trigger another participants to ask a question for for Doctor Echo? Don't be hesitate, guys. Just ask a question. Okay, we have. One other question from Miss Mr. Dimas, please. You may unmute your microphone. Hello. Okay. Thank you for uh, choosing me. No, uh, I want to ask. So, how long that um, the soil can be used after the eruption? I think uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Dimas, please, Dr. Eko. So the question is, soil used after eruption? How long? How long the soil can be used after the eruption? <laughs> is that right? I mean, um, how uh, after the eruption, uh, how long uh, to process that can be used? Oh, yeah, yeah, Kiri. I can uh, cut the point. Yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, some uh, question also uh, uh, after 2010 eruption. Uh, how long? Yeah, we can use the soil uh, after eruption. Yeah. Actually, we can uh, use the soil after. Uh, pyroclastic material become cold. Yeah, this is a uh, naturally process. Yeah, uh, if the volcanic material already uh, cold, you can uh, plant. Yeah, uh, many many uh, crop. Yeah, so you can see that one, just one year after uh, eruption, you can see the naturally some uh, plant uh, such as uh, acacia decurrent or can, uh, can grow fastly. Yeah? This is naturally and also you uh, found uh, bamboo also can grow well and uh, banana also grow well. This is uh, grew uh, naturally and also the people uh, can uh, plant uh, by, by uh, using the volcanic ash uh, as a nutrient uh, source yeah because uh, uh, volcanic ash uh, contain uh, a lot of uh, macro and uh, micro nutrient uh, this is uh, just my uh, response to your question yeah. okay thank you very much dr echo is there already answer your question mr dimas thank you very much uh, clear Okay, okay. I think this is uh, one last uh, question from Miss Francisca Aprilia from Indonesia. Please, uh, Miss Francisca. Okay, so can you hear my voice, sir? Yes. Yes, it's all okay. is all clear. Okay, so I want to ask a question about. Uh, in relation to conservation agriculture in the mountains, uh, like how is it uh, related to the direction of planting with the direction of the slopes, or like, uh, and regarding mounds and terraces about like uh, whether they affect crop productivity? Uh, as for example, like uh, planting potatoes uh, should be in the direction of the slope, or uh, it should not uh, direction of the slope. So I think that's my question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, in uh, Central Java or in Jakarta, uh, even we have uh, some uh, volcano, yes, such as uh, Merapi and also Dieng uh, area and also Merbabu area, yeah, uh, nearby 
Merapi, there is a uh, Merbabu area. So at the areas there is a specific uh, plan, yeah, the uh, farmers. Uh, for example, uh, in Merapi areas, I don't know why, uh, no farmers plants potato. Just uh, like uh, 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 broccoli and uh, uh, the others, yeah. Uh, but uh, in uh, Dian area, so so many farmers uh, plants a potato. This is, uh, uh, I don't know why the farmers uh, prefer this plant than the other plants. Yeah. So maybe there is uh, some uh, reasons. Yeah. So, uh, the Department of Agriculture always uh, give uh, extension yeah, to plants, uh, crops, uh, should be uh, managed yeah, uh, by considering the conservation aspect. Yeah? Uh, so, if uh, you plow the soil uh, in the same direction with slope, maybe it will accelerate the erosion process. So this is uh, uh, some important point. The uh, Department of uh, Agriculture to give extension to the farmer, yeah? uh, give the, some education. So uh, besides, uh, we produce some uh, food, some vegetables, but we have also considered the conservation aspect yeah? to sustain agriculture uh, production. I think this is uh, Miss Francisca Aprilia. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh. All right. Um, I apologize because of time really uh, flies so fast. So now we need to end this Q and A session. So thank you so much, Doctor Echo, for accepting our invitation and joining us, uh, joining with us. Okay, that was very inf very nice information regarding to uh, Mount Merapi. So from Dr. Echo's presentation, uh, I can conclude that land use in a volcanic area can be determined using the agroecological approach by considering the ecology, uh, geology characteristic of the land itself and as Dr. Echo mentioned, like disaster bring blessings. So from the eruptions uh, occur in Merapi Mountain, we have now an abundance of uh, organic material, for volcanic material that can be very potential as a plant nutrient sources that can be used as well as fertilizer. Also, we can see that each slope in Merapi uh, Mountain has different uh, type of characteristic. So the type of uh, Vegetation planted or cultivated in each slope will be different. So that's all. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Echo, for having us. So let's continue to the next, the third lecture. So before I invite the third lecture, let's watch a little vid bit video introduction regarding to tropical cropping system. Please. Land is the important thing in the tropical cropping system. Part of the coastal in the form of landscape that have fixed and variable characteristics, cycles, including atmosphere, climate, biosphere, animal, vegetation, and also human. Topography, including high level of elevation, sloppy area, and lowland. Pedosphere, soil lithosphere, bedrock or stone, and hydrosphere. In the example of relationship among climate, topography, and climate like evergreen forest as vegetation that is a high level of elevation, grassland just mid-grass, and soil is silo, and the last is desert as lowland. In the tropical country, have a soils, climates, land uses, and landforms that have an interrelation and interaction provide soil properties with soil fertility different, which is need to hold manage cropping system in tropical cropping. Indonesia is tropical country with more than 17,000 islands that have a lot of mountain and connected how to using this land for cultivate many crops. 
Soil in tropical area is very thick because the high precipitation. Indonesia has a lot of parameter and kind of soils except aridi soil type. Indonesia is surrounded by ring of fire which is half 129 active volcano mountain and mean of several plates. The Australian, Pacific, and Eurasian plates meet in Indonesia, creating a tectonic setting favorable that provides some of many kind of active volcano. Especially in Yogyakarta, there is parent materials and have one of active volcano that is Mount Merapi. All of area in Yogyakarta come from volcanic materials like sedimentary rock in western area, cars, volcanic materials, and mar. In the middle of Yogyakarta have an early or young soils with age less than 10,000 years from Mount Merapi and have a major soils in the west and south side. Yogyakarta have a tree climate type like periodic or wet climate in Merapi area, eudic or moist, and eustic or dry. Climate is very important to connect it to land uses. In the current situation, Yogyakarta have city and village areas, 10%. Natural forest and forest plantation land, 30%. Agricultural land, 30%. Marginal and degraded land, 30%. Land uses in Yogyakarta that is for forest conservation in Merapi area, in the lowland for rice farm, in the western and southern for agroforestry, rice, and cassava. In Indonesia, have a many landforms like alluvial, marine, fluvial marine, peat, aeolian, karst, volcanic, uplifted, folded or faulted, and michelinous. Relief in Yogyakarta that is slopey and monthly with elevation 1000 until 3000, slopey and hilly with elevation 300 until 700 flatty with elevation 100 until 500 flatty with elevation 200 and slopey and hilly with elevation 100 until 350 tropical cropping system in indonesia have a tree type that is monoculture rice cassava tea Sugarcane, corn, coffee, coconut, sagu palm, palm oil, fruits, vegetables, and spices. Polyculture, a lot of kind, cropping system pattern. Example, rice with coconut and surgeon system in Kulon Progo and agroforestry like crop, animals, and trees and etc. Management of soil fertility in Indonesia that is management of acid soils. 50% of total Indonesia area plantation and forest. Management of peat soils 20 million hectare. Management of paddy soils 9 million hectare. Management of marginal land, mine lands and sand soils. Sustainable agriculture soil quality and health and management of integrated nutrient okay so our fellow participants now let's move to the third lecture for today we will invite dr makruf nuruddin from gajah mada university indonesia who has expertise in the soil chemistry and environmental science and he will talk about land use management in Indonesia, especially in Yogyakarta. So, Dr. Makruf, do you hear my voice? Hmm. Okay, I can hear okay. Okay, how are you, Doctor? Well, I'm fine. Okay, Thank you look spectacular. Glad to see you again, Dr. Makruf. Um, so, you 
uh, we'll have 20 minutes for your deli for delivery your presentation and after that we will open the Q&A session for 10 minutes well the slide is already available on the screen so the time the screen and the time is yours now please doctor okay thank you very much mr chairman uh, uh, on this session uh, Okay, I would like to talk about tropical cropping system. Uh, this one is uh, outline of my presentation. This one is uh, uh, Indonesia, is a uh, uh, country region. Yeah, I want to uh, talk a little about this one. And then second one, I will talk about the tropical cropping system. And then the last one is uh, <coughs> special. I want to talk about this, how to manage uh, cell fertility. Uh, first one, uh, I think uh, Miss Nenny also uh, talked about this one, and also Paiko, I think. Uh, actually, uh, uh, management of uh, cropping system is very important, and this one is related to uh, uh, characteristic of this land. So I want to talk about the soils, and then climate, and use, and also, and also land farm. Uh, uh, from interrelation and interaction between uh, uh, this uh, one uh, determine the soil properties and also uh, soil fertility. Now, from this uh, soil fertility, we can uh, manage uh, land how to use uh, for uh, uh, cultivation. And this one is Indonesia, I think. This one is uh, short uh, uh, narration of, uh, about this tropical area. This one is uh, uh, soil and uh, Edward. Uh, this one is tropical area, tropical is special, yeah. Like Indonesia, all of uh, Indonesia uh, located in tropical region. So you can see this one. So uh, because tropical is special, yeah, uh, we can find uh, soil in Indonesia, all of kind of soil, yeah, except uh, arid soil. We cannot get arid diesel because arid diesel in arid area. Indonesia uh, uh, don't have arid uh, area, yeah. So we don't have uh, arid diesel. Uh, special also, maybe you can see this one is glycerol. Uh, <coughs> glycerol is special because glycerol is soil have uh, very low uh, temperatures. We have also in uh, Jaya Wijaya in Papua Island. And this one is uh, Java Island. This one is Yogyakarta. I think it's uh, Nani and also uh, talk about uh, Yogyakarta. So in this presentation, I want to talk uh, more yeah, about Indonesia, but uh, not not totally. Yeah. And this one is uh, Paiko explained about this uh, Indonesian position, uh, ring of fire. So we have uh, a lot of uh, mountain, yeah, volcanic. Uh, uh, I think we, by common sense, yeah, uh, we have 130 uh, uh, volcano. And this one, I think, uh, everybody know. Ah, also, Indonesia uh, located uh, in the uh, mid of uh, three plates, yeah, Eurasia, and then Indo Australia, and also Pacific. Yeah, this one is special, yeah, and uh, this. Uh, uh condition make uh, we have uh, a lot of island yeah? a lot of island at, uh, with uh, many kind of variability of uh, uh, geology yeah so um, as mentioned by Iko, yeah we have uh, 17 thousand uh, uh, island yeah? now this one is special in Jakarta uh, yeah actually in Jakarta we have uh, 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 beside volcanic material, uh, as we uh, get explanation from uh, Pak Eko, we have uh, also cars, yeah, cars and armal, especially in uh, uh, east part of Yogyakarta. Yeah, this one is uh, uh, very old material. Yeah, and also sedimentary rock. Also, this one is uh, similar <coughs> similar age, and also in. <coughs> Uh, west part of Jakarta also we have sedimentary rock and this one is tertiary yeah uh, more than uh, 15 million years old but this volcanic material is uh, this one is 
<coughs> quaternary ya, less than six hundred thousand years ya and also cars ya and one this this area in southern part of Jakarta is uh, sandy soil ya this one is not so wide but this one is very important thing now because uh, <coughs> many activities uh, cultivation in this area okay uh, and then this one is uh, about the soil ya yeah, as i mentioned uh, actually we have uh, young soils uh, from vulcan material this one all of this one is young soils and then uh, special soils i mentioned this one is uh, fertisol and uh, molisol yeah species soil we found this one is fertisol and molisol and then metal soils this one is alfisol yeah metal soil this one is uh, red soil yeah but even the red soil this one is uh, 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 still fertile yeah because uh, not uh, like uh, ultisol yeah uh, red soil like ultisol is very uh, uh, low fertility yeah but this one is uh, still uh, uh, fertile yeah and then this one is about climate yeah we have dry and wet season uh, rainfall more than uh, 1500 millimeters per year and then humidity uh, more than uh, 70% and then temperature more than 25 degrees Celsius I think so this one is uh, because we have uh, high rainfall yeah. this one is very important thing connected to uh, how to uh, use uh, land to cultivate uh, plants, I think. And this one is, I mentioned, this one is uh, in the top of Merapi. This one is very deep, yeah, because then very, uh, very cold, yeah. And then this one is you dig, yeah, uh, or moist. And we have also a uh, eustic, yeah. Even though this one is actually not real eustic, yeah. Actually, this one is uh, included in eustic, but this area is uh, dry, yeah. Because especially in this area, because the, in the southern part, uh, is part of Jakarta. This one is uh, cars, yeah. Uh, so we have uh, <coughs> we don't have a river at the surface, but we have a river and subsurface. So uh, water is very important thing in this area. Okay, uh, but land use, as I mentioned in uh, in the videos, yeah. Uh, village, I think around ten percent, and then natural forest and forest plantation thirty percent. And then agriculture land around 30% and marginal and degraded land uh, 30%. So in my presentation, I want to uh, talk uh, all of things, yeah, but not uh, so detailed. Yeah. Uh, and this one is uh, uh, land use in Jakarta. Yeah, I think uh, forest conservation in the top of Arabi. And then agroforestry in west and east part of Jakarta. And then rice farm uh, in the Jakarta flat uh, uh, area and then also rice and cassava this one is very very famous in uh, east part of uh, Jakarta in Gunung Kidul and also cassava and forestry yeah and also special I think miss uh, many yeah about this agroforestry yeah in Langran and also in uh, west part of Jakarta in Menoreh uh, and also uh, landform we have uh, all of uh, kind of landform yeah? like alluvial and then marine, fluvial marine, peat, alien, and then cars, volcanic, afflicted, faulted, faulted, and miscellaneous. Yeah, uh, all of kind of uh, landform we have. Uh, and this one is uh, about the relief, I think. This uh, and sloppy and mountainy. And then this one is uh, flatty. Yeah, uh, in Jakarta, uh, going to the beach. Yeah, this is flatty. And the sloopy and hilly and west part and also in uh, east part of Jakarta, uh, we have special flatty in this uh, uh, east part of Jakarta. This one is uh, marl, yeah. The soil is fertile soil, yeah. Some area is rice field in, in this area, but in the south southern part of uh, Karas, this one is uh, sloopy and hilly. Yeah. Now, okay, uh, the very important things how to uh, use. Uh, in this uh, discussion about this uh, uh, soil fertility, yeah. So in this talk, I want to talk about this acid soil 
Why? Because that's very important because 50% of uh, soil in Indonesia is uh, acid soil, putih soil. And then I want to talk about the spit soil. We have actually now 14 million hectares. Uh, previously, we have uh, 20, yeah, 20 million hectares, but now it's a lot loss, yeah, a bit loss, yeah, uh, because uh, offer uh, uh, decomposition and also subduction, yeah, and also uh, 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 a lot of uh, pit loss now. And then, by soil, we have uh, 9 million hectares, and then also uh, at this one specific mentioned marginal land, yeah. Uh, mining land and also uh, sand soils and then we'll talk about uh, special about the uh, soil fertility and integrated uh, management of soil and this one is uh, uh, mine land in Indonesia we have a lot of this one yeah the biggest problem is post mining reclamation yeah we don't have a proper method to reclaim the land yeah based on my experience we don't have uh, success reclamation because uh, after the mining we uh, we cannot get soil yeah actually soil loss from this area and this one is uh, uh, a problem yeah in uh, mining uh, land in indonesia because uh, the company uh, didn't care about this uh, reclamation for example this one is uh, palm oil yeah this actually this this area no soil yeah no soil and very very hard yeah so uh, palm oil cannot grow very well actually this one is uh, two years yeah but still uh, uh, still very bad yeah very bad growth yeah. and also in this area also in uh, Bangka and Bitong this one is uh, thin uh, mine yeah. A uh, lot of area. This one is uh, we 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 get on like this one. Yeah, this one is uh, this land is uh, damaged and unproductive. I get experience uh, from uh, one farmers try to cultivate rice here, but this very productivity is very low. The result is very low, just less than one ton per hectare. Very very low. And actually, this one is also uh, contamination of. Uh, uh, metal, I think, is very important. Yeah. Ah, first one is management of acid soils. Yeah, very important thing. Uh, I think Mr. Eko, Mr. Eko, yeah, explained about uh, soil uh, uh, chemical properties. I think very important. Yeah. So in, in the acid soil, liming, fertilizing is very important. Yeah. And then this one is characteristic uh, about this uh, low pH and also toxicity. And this one is upland in Indonesia is uh, dominant, yeah, fifty percent. This one UV salts, uh, low soil fertility, yeah. And we found also in this area, uh, 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 usually we used to uh, plantation, yeah. So in this area we mentioned this one is palm oil, yeah. We have uh, sixteen million hectares, yeah, uh, the most uh, white in Indonesia. And also the other one is tea and kafu, and then sugarcane, and then rubber, coconut, cocoa, sagu, etc. Yeah, this one is main uh, commodity in Indonesia. Yeah. And then second one is pit soil. Yeah, I want to talk about this characteristic area, prospective challenge, and also environment issues. Ah, this one is uh, uh, bad uh, experience uh, to use pit. So you can see this one is. Uh, 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 subsidy, yeah, subside uh, by offer drainage, uh, drainage exploitation for agriculture, agriculture for uh, cultivation in this area is rubber and then coconut and also palm oil, yeah. And also, actually, we have more than uh, fast trees industry, yeah, uh, for uh, palm wood, yeah. This also, for example, like Acacia crassicarpa, big problem in uh, Indonesia. And then also uh, we uh, develop uh, system, new system, polyculture. Uh, the system is uh, minimize drainage, yeah, followed by cultivation of indigenous indigenous plant and also trees like sagu, rubber, and also many kind of uh, indigenous uh, trees and also plant in this area. Yeah. This one is good. And then second one, this one also polyculture. 
uh, we try to cultivate uh, vegetables, for example, but minimize drainage. Yeah. It's minimize drainage. Yeah, actually, we uh, we have uh, a good experience in this one in uh, North Kalimantan. Yeah, we can plant uh, many kind of uh, vegetables. Ah, this one is very dangerous. This one is pirate. Yeah. Pirate. Yeah. Pirate is very dangerous because this uh, actually uh, uh, oxidation of pirate. This one is pH very low. Yeah, we measure here pH around two. Yeah, two point five. Yeah. Now, okay, this one is uh, another thing about uh, uh, gas emission. Yeah, actually, also we have uh, 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 many research uh, problem. Another problem is uh, gas emission. Uh, for example, uh, uh, carbon dioxide and then methane also and so. Yeah. Ah, third one is party soil. This one is, uh, I think, uh, main uh, system in uh, our country for uh, plant uh, or uh, plant area. Uh, monoculture and polyculture, also uh, polyculture, and also we want to uh, talk about production and also environment of rice and also challenge. Now in uh, our uh, data actually rice production is not optimal yeah less than five ton per hectare yeah and then rice party uh, uh, decrease due to land conversion to be industry and non-agriculture now is uh, uh, remain around uh, eight million hectares I think yeah? and also marginal land need a lot of effort in this productivity yeah this one is more culture rice I think and this one also uh, rice with uh, another plants like uh, banana and also trees yeah this one also rice yeah uh, and also trees yeah, in Gunung Gitu. some farmers uh, cultivate corn yeah, peas yeah, and so on ah this one is a uh, research yeah, about the rice actually we have yeah we have uh, uh, many alternative to improve yeah to improve rice yeah. As, especially uh, by incorporate uh, straw, yeah. It is just I want to show uh, briefly, yeah. Uh, this one also, yeah. Uh, uh, research in many countries like in Japan, Thailand, Philippines, yeah, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Actually, uh, straw is very important, yeah, uh, to make compost, yeah, from straw. This one also nutrient from straw, yeah, very important thing. Yeah. And uh, this one also uh, application of uh, straw also in many country actually a lot of nutrient from straw so it is better to uh, back to the field yeah? not to burn or move yeah, remove from the land is that this one is very important thing yeah and this one is also uh, still uh, incorporation straw okay I think see just I saw ah this one also you can see this one is if we incorporate straw, yeah, uh, nitrogen is very high. Yeah, if remove very low. If burn, that's like in the middle. And also this one, yeah, uh, nitrogen also uh, by straw incorporate, incorporated very high. But if remove very low, and this one is very important. Yeah. Ah, and also productivity by incorporate straw. You can see this one is productivity is different, totally different. Yeah, uh, different one ton per hectare. It's very important. Yeah. Okay, I think this one is also uh, research in IRI, yeah, in Philippines. Okay. Ah, next one is ah, uh, that one is integrated farming system. This one is uh, many kind, yeah, many kind integrated farming system in Indonesia. For example, like this one is uh, surgeon system, yeah, as uh, Miss Nani Nani explained, yeah. Surgeon system is solution for wet and dry land condition. Water is efficient during dry season because we can use this this part, yeah. And then during flooding, it's still possible to cultivate in the half of the land. And the uh, upper this one we can we can cultivate. Now actually, like this one is surjan, yeah. We have uh, furo. This one is furo, and this one is uh, ridge, yeah. In the dry season, we can cultivate in the furo, but in wet season and flooding, we can cultivate in uh, ridge like this one. This one is surjan, very famous in Yogyakarta and also in Indonesia, uh, like this one. Yeah. 
uh, we can cultivate the uh, rice yeah, and the furrow, but in it we can cultivate another yeah, another crops and also fruit, for example, yeah, like mango and so on. Yeah. And this one is special. We can see from the air about this surgeon system in Jakarta. Yeah. Very nice, yeah, like cloth. Yeah. And this one also surgeon system in uh, other area in Gunung Kidul and Demak yeah, in Central uh, Java, like this one. Yeah. We can cultivate rice and also uh, uh, corn, cassava, and so on. Ah, uh, this one is system in the upper area in the in Central Java, for example. Yeah, this one is basically vegetables. Yeah, cultivated in highland with slopey hilly and mountainy topography. So terra system is, is recommended. Yeah, it is located above uh, 900 meters at sea level. Yeah, above sea level with cold climate and volcanic uh, mount. Yeah, this one in uh, all of mount in Indonesia. Yeah, uh, vegetables and also tea. Yeah, and also we have tea and also coffee, especially uh, Arabica coffee. Yeah, in this uh, area like this one. Yeah, but I cannot show. And this one also uh, terrace like this one. This one is uh, eggplant and then orange uh, and, and tobacco. Yeah. And this one is a uh, combination, yeah, a coffee and then orange. Yeah. And then uh, eggplant. Yeah. This one tobacco and uh, cassava. Ah. Uh, integrated farming system also in sandy soils. Uh, as explained this uh, nanny, I think yeah, uh, in sandy soil we get this one a lot of uh, many kind of vegetables like chili, corn, water spinach, etc. And also fruits yeah from sandy soil we cultivate uh, melon and then also watermelon uh, also orange yeah by special irrigation yeah drip irrigation now is uh, at fun yeah farmers uh, applied in this area. Ah. Dr. Makruf, uh, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. I think the uh, time is already uh, finished. Okay. Okay. So, I think uh, maybe can we can continue to discuss. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe if uh, any uh, there is question, I, I can explain continue on my side. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> And I think um, there is still a lot of slide that will uh, Dr. Makrov explain about. So, especially in the uh, cropping system in tropical area, I think this is uh, might be trigger some participant to curious something more about the tropical system in Indonesia. So, uh, for our partic participants. If you have any question, uh, you may rise. You may click your right hand button, or you can also deliver your question at chat box session. Please. Okay, so Dr. Makruf uh, previously. Explain about the cropping system, the example of cropping system in Indonesia, such as surgeon, uh, also uh, polyculture, and etc. So I think that's uh, pretty decent and pretty rare in the other country. So okay, uh, we have one question from Mr. Noman Ahmad from Pakistan uh, what will need what will need to change on the idea of shifting from soil fertility and productivity to soil health so thank you uh, Mr. Noman please to Dr. Makruf for the answer okay thank uh, Mr. Ahmad uh, I think it's very nice uh, question so actually uh, uh, in Indonesia, for example, uh, we uh, <coughs> we uh, live uh, the uh, the last experience. Uh, actually, uh, our farmers actually uh, 
almost farmers applied the organic material yeah but now many farmers in Indonesia not applied organic materials yeah so this is problem yeah because actually yeah by applied uh, organic fertilizers yeah we can uh, increase uh, for example especially microbe yeah microbes yeah combination between microbe especially increase uh, biological uh, fertilities yeah for, for biological properties and then uh, actually uh, we use uh, uh, laser laser low input yeah low input uh, uh, agriculture we decrease uh, unorganic fertilizers but we apply the uh, organic fertilizers yeah by combination between this one actually uh, step by step yeah we can improve uh, our land yeah uh, to be health yeah uh, to be soil health and i think if uh, uh, we can improve uh, soil health i can uh, catch up uh, productivity yeah productivity and also the uh, the complete yeah soil fertility because not only chemistry and also physical but also biology i think this one is the point okay okay Thank you very much for Dr. Makrov. Uh, Mr. Noman, if that answer already enough for you, Mr. Okay. Uh, for the other participant, if you have a question, you can click your raise hand button or you can also deliver your question on at the Zoom uh, chat box. Okay, um, we have another one question from Mr. Adam. Please, Mr. Adam. Uh, hello, Mr. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, there is any problem uh, about the distribution about the nutrition when we use the sugar technique? Maybe that's it. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not, not clear. Uh, okay, I repeat it. Uh, there is any problem with the uh, distribution of nutrition in the plant when we use a uh, surrogate technique? Okay, okay. 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 Uh, thanks. Please, doctor. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, first time if we construct surgeon, I think uh, uh, in the furrow, yeah, in the furrow, I think it's not for time. Yeah, because uh, we remove topsoil to the reeds. Yeah, and the reeds is very fertile. So, but by uh, by time, yeah, I think because you know, uh, rain by rainfall, for example, yeah, like this one, and then uh, nutrient, yeah, removed from reeds going to the furrow, yeah. So, uh, by the time I uh, finally the furrow is fertile also, yeah. This one is I think good good system, yeah. Uh, if we applied, yeah, if we applied uh, fertilizers in the reeds, yeah. And then uh, rain, and then uh, nutrient remove from the reeds going to the furrow, and rice, especially the furrow, yeah, can uh, uh, can benefit from this nutrient. Yeah, yeah. I think by the time, um, even though in furrow uh, and also in reeds, nutrient is uh, nice. Yeah, I think. Okay. Okay. How about the answer? Mr. Okay, Adam? I think the answer is enough. Uh, thank you, Mr. Okay, thank you. Um, any participant want to share another question? Please, you may click your right hand button. Or I'm, uh, I'm gonna ask some question, doctor. Can I? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, a little bit curious about the historic of the surgeon system. Is it actually the uh, the farmers, uh, the civil, the civil, or uh, or the researchers that suggest to use the surgeon farmer? Is it natural from the landform, or the, is it a suggestion from researchers? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, uh, there is. Uh, research yeah 
about this history of surgeon actually not not clear until now yeah just this one is uh, uh, from local government also yeah and also from farmers yeah uh, if farmers has a problem about this land for example flooding and then at dry season dry season uh, uh, water is not available yeah and then uh, farmers and also local government have uh, discussed about how to uh, construct this land. Uh, finally, surgeon system is a good alternative, I think. But actually, by history, I get also not only in Jakarta, actually. Yeah, in many areas in Indonesia also uh, applied this one. But uh, by experience, uh, the surgeon finally applied in many areas in Indonesia, for example, in pit, yeah, pit land, yeah, and uh, lowland in Sumatra and Kalimantan also yeah, applied surgeon. I think this one. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, so we have still uh, time for doing the question and answer session. So if you if you have any question well, regarding to the okay, Doctor. Okay, okay, please. So if you ha if you have any question, uh, your participants. Please just click your raise hand button. Okay, uh, if there is no question from participants, we will close this Q and A session, Doctor. Okay. Thank so. You very much. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your for joining us in this session today, Doctor Makruf, for and delivering for such an interesting talk there. So, um, so I have I I, I want to before I cl close this uh, session with you, Doctor. I want to make a conclusion a little bit. So in tropical climate like Indonesia, we have many varieties of soil. Each soil has different characteristic and each soil has different correct recommendation for plant uh, cultivation, such as planting rubber and sago on pit soil in North, and in North Kalimantan, we have polyculture and other cropping system that are able to adapt to the type of soil form. So I think that's all. Thank you very much, Dr. Makrof, for having us. Uh, might to see you again. And for the last uh, session, for the last lecture, we will hear about the lecture with expert entitled Bio Bioenergy in Theoretical Perspective. But before we start the lecture, we will uh, show vi the, the video to introduction to the bioenergy in theoretical perspective, please. Energy may be one of the words that we often hear from learning materials during school until now in the society. However, until now, dependence on non-renewable energy continues to increase. Did you know that today the world is facing the challenges of climate change, shortage of fossil fuel supplies, and the depletion of global fossil fuel reserves? Therefore, at this time, renewable energy is needed, which is called bioenergy. Bioenergy is energy that comes from living materials such as wood, plants, or animal waste. Bioenergy can be burned directly for heat or converted into biofuels such as biodiesel or bioethanol. Biofuel production continues to increase from year to year. United States and Brazil are countries with the largest biofuel production in the world. Biofuel itself can use ingredients from cassava, sorghum, and maize or plants that contain high cellulose, then add it and put into the hydrolysis stage, then fermented and distilled until dehydration, then produce bioethanol. 
In Indonesia, there are many natural resources that can be used as the main source of biofuels, such as corn, cassava with various varieties, sorghum, and so on. Of the various natural resources that exist in Indonesia, Chatropa is the most potential plant to be used as the main biofuel material. This plant can grow on critical land and its growth is quite good. This plant has been cultivated in Chirata West Java, Kupang NTT, Minahasa Central Kalimantan, Buleleng Bali, to Central Sumba. And this Chatropa has been supported by Indonesian government since 2006 called the Chatropa Expedition. However, there is still a lot to support the effectiveness of bioenergy as a substitute for non-renewable energy. Related to the stock of feed for livestock, regulatory issue in the country, production lines, and timing. In addition, when the demand for biofuels exceeds sustainable production levels, this bioenergy will no longer be less viable energy source. Also, all the fossil fuels used in the production of corn in the production of fertilizers, and so on, in the refining process will become very dirty fuels. Okay, now uh, we going to the last session of our today ITFSS, and I hope everyone still stay tuned and still excited to our last lecture with expert. So, and because for this lecture we with expert session, uh, we will invite lecturer who has expertise in bioenergy, and he will bring us about bioenergy in theoretical perspective. And please welcome Mr. Tony from Universitas Momodia Yogyakarta. So, um, so uh, Mr. Tony, how are you feeling today? Good. Okay. As as I look, uh, you look spectacular from today. Oh, a little bit exhausting, but you know, you know, you, you looks really ready for this uh, today ITFSS. Okay. So this is Mr. Tony, and he is my one of my favorite lecture from engineering faculty and he's yeah because <laughs> i know you and he's one of my lecturer when i was uh, taking the 
uh, bioenergy class. So, uh, and that's why before uh, pandemic situation. So good to see you again, uh, Mr. Tony. Okay, uh, okay, Mr. So you have 20 minutes for your material explanation and we will uh, continue with uh, our Q&A session, 10 minutes. So Mr. Tony, are you ready for giving the material? Okay. Yes, sure, sure. Okay, uh, Mr. Tony, the screen and the time is now yours, please. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tony Haryadi. I'm from the electrical engineering. So uh, for the lecture today, I'm not going deeper into uh, agriculture because uh, my background is electrical, but I'm not also uh, going into the electrical engineering, so I'm going to be in between engineering and agriculture. Now, has anyone uh, seen my presentation yet? Is it on screen, my presentation? Yeah. So the topic this afternoon is uh, bioenergy, theoretical and practical approach. What we will discuss uh, is the introduction and background, of course, and then bioenergy cost and efficiency, bioenergy impact on human and environment, and bioenergy implementation. Again, this topic will uh, cover some part of engineering and some part of agriculture, but it's not going to be uh, very hard as this is uh, already late in the afternoon. Now I'm going to start with questions. What is energy? Some of my students maybe have seen this. Uh, and why do we need energy? This is two important questions. What is energy and why do we need energy? And this is the background uh, to what we are going to discuss today. Now energy is capacity to do work. Without energy, we cannot work. Energy is also the carbon content, so that's why we can have bioenergy, because the carbon inside the human body will reside, and the residue will become uh, energy. If you can see this, this is the carbon cycle, Carbon from the pollution, for example, from the factory, from the car, CO2 will be absorbed by trees and living animals. And then when this biological creature died, and then they decompose, and they also become fossil fuel. Fossil fuel is actually bioenergy. The problem is that it needs millions of years to make this fossil fuel. And then the fossil fuel will be used by car or again by the factories and produce CO2 and then again absorb. This is the carbon cycle. So what we want to take for the energy, uh, the bioenergy, is the carbon content from the biological bodies. And then Energy is also divided into two categories. The first one is renewable and non-renewable energy. Renewable energy is the energy source that is abundant in amount in the, on Earth, or also that, the, that can be available in a very short time. For example, it's the sunlight. This is renewable energy and also bioenergy from trees. We can replant the trees in a short time, then become energy. That's what renewable. Fossil fuel is non-renewable because it needs millions of years to make fossil fuel. And why do we need energy? Energy consumption is related to economic growth. You can see the chart here. When the energy consumption, the blue one is the energy consumption, and this is the GDP, 
So when the energy consumption increases, the GDP also increases. When the energy consumption decreases, the GDP also decreases. It means that if you need more income, more money, then you need more energy, meaning that you have to work hard to get more money and more income. So that's why we need energy. Now we have answered the two questions. Now we have a big problem. Energy cannot be created. It can on also, it can only be transformed or, or converted into different type of energy. For example, the chemical energy from the food can also can be converted into, uh, for example, heat, or into mechanical, if we walk, we run, cycling, etc. But we cannot create energy. It's just transferred or transformed or converted. Now we have increasing energy demand. We are now in 2022, around here, the gap from the supply and demand. This is the fossil fuel. The demand, this is, oh, sorry, this is the demand and this is the fossil fuel. The, de the demand gap and supply has big, and at the end of 2300, we have, we almost has, almost have nothing for the fossil fuel, and the demand is very high. That's because we very much dependent on fossil fuel. Fossil fuel is non-renewable energy, so we cannot get fossil fuel in a very short time. But we don't have to be worried because we have a global renewable energy potential. We have bioenergy. The potential on Earth is around 100 terawatt. The solar is 120,000 terawatt. We have geothermal and everything. We will focus on this bioenergy. But the global energy usage on Earth is only 15 terawatt. So actually we don't have to be worried because we have uh, energy potential from bioenergy and from other renewable sources. Now what is bioenergy? <coughs> bioenergy is energy that comes from biological source such as trees, plants, manure, or wood is the oldest form of bioenergy that we can burn directly to make fire, to cook, to, for heating and everything. So other, obtain, other methods of obtaining bioenergy is also making uh, ethanol and from anaerobic digestion we can also make biogas. Bioenergy today, we have ethanol. It's used for transportation. It can replace uh, gasoline, petrol. And the main user of this uh, type of bioenergy is Brazil and US. They made ethanol from corn. And then biodiesel, it replaces diesel for transportation and also for factories. The raw material is oil seeds. Uh, main users is uni, uh, European Union, especially German and France. And then we also have biomass that can be used to uh, make electricity from generator. And then it replaces coal, gas, oil, or kerosene. The raw material is woody materials like uh, wood chips or uh, some kind of uh, food factories, uh, res residual, and everything. <coughs> so it can be, it be, the main users of this biomass is the developing countries. This is the biomass energy conversion technology, the thermochemical conversion, biochemical conversion, and extracting, uh, extraction of oil seeds. 
using the three, three types of uh, uh, technology, you can have different output. For example, for thermochemical combustion, then you can have steam, and you can use for steam turbine, and then you can produce heat or electricity. And then by using gasification, you can produce gas that you can turn gas turbine to make electricity, and so on. <coughs> Digestion, you can have a, you can build the biogas that can turn, the gas can turn a gas engine, and then you can make electricity, or you can burn directly for heating, or fuels, and then f with fermentation you can have ethanol as fuels. Extraction from Chatrofa, for example, then you can have biodiesel for fuels. This is the common uh, conventional technology that we use today. So the bioenergy cost and efficiency, plants are only at most 2% efficient at turning sunlight into energy. Well, we then have to harvest them with machines and transport, which are energy intensive and expensive. Anaerobic digestion costs are variable depending on size and location. This is the uh, uh, diagram of uh, gas, uh, gasifier. This is uh, the <coughs> reactor. We can put uh, animal waste to this reactor and then it produces gas. And then gas, the gas is uh, going into the steam turbine and then the steam turbine uh, turn the generator and then make electricity. There are many types of uh, uh, electricity plant from biogas. We can have it in, we can see it in the Netherlands or in Malaysia. The advantage of uh, bioenergy, burning biogas to get our electricity reduces our reliance on the use of coal, oil, and gas in our power stations. And then, in many cases, it's also get rid of waste product. Anaerobic digestion is similar to the North Sea gas. It, cl it is clean, but it's with a uh, of course, it is with low uh, pressure, and it's ready to use. The byproduct of bioenergy can be also be used as a fertilizer, for example. And it's also possible to have smaller installation and in individual homes and communities. Now, the, the disadvantage of bioenergy growing enough biomass to sustain energy needs will take up a lot of space and uses up to re the resources we need for also growing our food. Bioenergy still produces carbon dioxide like fossil fuel, but it is uh, less, it's harmless for human being. Now the Bioenergy impact on human and environment. There is a, a long debate on food, uh, food versus fuel. We can have here, it passes parcels of corn, it equals to 21.6 gallons of ethanol as fuel, but it also enough to feed a person the whole year. Now which one we choose, fuel or food? This is the... Uh, long debate on uh, food versus fuel. It's been many decades on the debates. Also, the, if we want to grow fuel, then we need to add the land for plantations. This is the land use for food crops and, and arable land, 1.5 billion hectare. And this is for the traditional, we have to add more around 50 to 200,000, uh, 200 million hectares. So the first, the first for food we can, we only have this, but for growing bioenergy, then we need to add more, meaning that we have to reduce the total global land, global land 13 billion hectares on earth. 
this is the sources in 2015 probably it is now much much bigger also we have a we need a more water for biofuel crop this is the tables for water requirement for biofuel crop and this is the uh, historic and projected changes in water consumption for food production 1960 to 2050 it means for food only we can only we use only this amount of water but then if we need to grow a uh, biofuel crop then we need to add this amount of water in this table and then also as the the previous uh, slide says that we have to increase the lands for biofuel crop. It means that there is a potential for biodiversity loss. So here is the uh, main cause for biodiversity loss is land use change. Invasive species, unsustainable soil management, pollution and sealing. This is our concern here because the land use change uh, from forest to plantation. So what we need is to prevent this uh, biodiversity loss is the a good policy for land use conversion, sustainable agricultural system, protect native ecosystem and indigenous lands, make sustainability a priority for all biofuel production, moderate the environment damage that result from the dramatic price volatility in agricultural commodities, take advantage of this rare opportunity to redesign the agricultural and energy sectors. These are the uh, recommendations to prevent biodiversity loss. Now we come to the uh, implementation. Uh, Resource-based hope biogas plan, the anaerobic digestion, is particularly suited for, to wet, for wet organic materials. And large quantity of wood and solid form is generated by industrial sectors. Then actually we have uh, many resources for bioenergy. Poultry waste can also be used. Uh, our university has this small uh, project in Potorono, this is the name of a place. Uh, we built this type of digester. The gas, this is uh, produced gas and the gas is used for cooking. For the home industry, this is the scheme for the diagram for the digester. Uh, there is also a potential for briquetting system, briquetting system from uh, uh, sawdust, uh, from chips, and then we make it uh, compact so it can be burned. Biodiesel, biodiesel is also very common. It's extraction from palm trees to become vegetable oil and then mixed with fossil fuel or can also be burned directly as a fuel. Now the practical approach for uh, bioenergy project is first is self-sufficient. So try to uh, fulfill your own requirement and not trying to fulfill like the whole country. This is for the small scale uh, project. And then resource specific. You have to know what kind of resources that, that, uh, has, that you have around you and then that can become a bioenergy and then try something that is easy to store and then start with small now small scale bioenergy is a uh, very common to be built in uh, rural areas now uh, I, can, uh, I will give you some project Let's look around you and find out what type of bioenergy sources available in your area. 
and then what type what type of bioenergy that you will produce uh, depends on the source of bioenergy. Now one last question. Now you know that uh, trash, garbage can become bioenergy or maybe uh, animal manure can also become energy. Now the last question is, would trash become gold now? Now it's your time to discuss that then the economical value uh, of trash will have an economical values. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tony, for your presentation regarding to the bioenergy. And now we will start the Q&A session for 10 minutes. I think there is still a lot of participants who are still excited to the session because uh, our other three last uh, speakers they talk about uh, soil and cropping system in Indonesia. So this is a bit different topic. Uh, from our lecture that is uh, bioenergy so please if you guys any question just uh, click your right hand button on your zoom meeting or you can also deliver your question in the chat box session or you can answer the the big question from Mr. Tony, does trust becomes gold? Yes. yes. Would now trust become gold? Or what happens if trust or garbage has economical values? Okay. Would, would somebody then uh, throw away their trust or they just keep it? because it will have uh, economical values. What do you think? Okay, regarding to those questions, uh, okay, I think there is uh, participants who want to share a question regarding to uh, Mr. Tony presentation. Uh, uh, sorry, okay. before uh, I want to ask some questions. Please, I Mr. Adam. Okay, uh, my question is, uh, what is the main obstacle for application this bioenergy in Indonesia right now? Uh, the main obstacle of the bioenergy in Indonesia. Okay, should I answer directly now? Uh, please. Yeah. The main obstacle for bioenergy in Indonesia is the high cost for investment. This is the first one. And the second one is the policy. Like uh, in, in the in the video before my presentation, there was a project for Jatrova Expedition from 2006. At that time, uh, the government asked uh, the people to plan Jatrova, and then after the, the, the seed uh, has grown, and then they will make it uh, biofuel. The problem was that nobody would buy the Jatrova seeds. And there was no policy who will buy the Jatrova seeds. And then after the harvesting time, and then they harvest the Jatrova seeds, but nothing happened because there was no policy who would buy the, the Jatrova and who would convert it into uh, biodiesel. So we need a good policy. And then second one, uh, the high cost of uh, uh, bioenergy investment is too high for the time being. Okay, uh, Mr. Adam, Adam uh, is there already answering your question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, this is very good answer. Okay, thank you. thank you, Mr. Adam, for your question. So, regarding to those answer, I think, yeah, uh, Jatrofa is, uh, is one of expedition from the government, I think, yeah? And then it turns out disappear I think yeah yeah of the regulation is not re really strong enough strong enough in Indonesia so okay that's it um, any other participants who want to uh, give 
or ask the question? Okay, we have one question, another question from Miss Francisca Aprilia. Okay, I try to read. Uh, why the use of biomass energy is not as big as the use of fossil fuels when it is very useful? Then regarding to pyrolysis with plastic materials to produce gas, oil, and charcoal, why is it application still? Uh, limited. Okay. Uh, the first problem is that the like uh, I said before that the investment high investment. For example, the project's production of ethanol one liter ethanol equal to approximately one dollar, and in Indonesia, the uh, gas gasoline is also now almost one dollar. So it means that it is easier or maybe uh, cheaper to buy fossil fuel than to buy ethanol. In uh, Brazil, also the main producer of ethanol is also uh, the fossil fuel is also uh, heavily used because of the price of ethanol is higher than uh, fossil fuel. What was the second question? Uh, the second question uh, is then uh, regarding to pyrolysis uh, with plastic materials to produce gas, oil, and charcoal. Why is it? Uh, why is its application is still limited? Yeah, plastics actually uh, also made of uh, carbon. So uh, the problem is that the carbon residue from plastic is cannot be turned into. Uh, bioenergy or into energy so that's the problem is it gives uh, pollution and also from coal gives more pollution than uh, for example the cleanest now is the nuclear technology nuclear energy 